Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Penny. I'm the president of USA Gymnastics, and it's a real pleasure to be here today. What a class of individuals and athletes that we're inducting into the 2005 Hall of Fame. People that have made their mark on the competitive floor and their contributions to the success of our organization. And these are very special people. And it's a real privilege for us to be able to honor you here today in conjunction with our most prestigious event. Uh, I've spent some time at a couple of Hall of Fame induction ceremonies over the last couple, over the last year or so. And I'm very proud of the way we recognize our Hall of Fame inductees. And um, we're working on, on new ways to continue recognizing our Hall of Fame inductees and Hall of Fame members. Before we get started with the program, uh, I'd like to thank a few people and recognize a few people, particularly the Hall of Fame committee. Uh, Carolyn Bowers, would you please stand? Fred Turoff, Abby Grossfeld, Linda Chinzinski, Barbara Tonry, Jay Ashmore, and Dick Aronson. Not all of them are here with us today, but these folks are a very dedicated group of people who care a great deal about preserving the legacy of the sport of gymnastics, and particularly the people who have done a lot for USA Gymnastics over the years. And I want to applaud the commitment that they've made over the past few years and the serious nature with which they've taken this job and kept on us as a staff to make sure that we properly and, and correspondingly honor the recipients of our Hall of Fame. I also want to pay tribute to the various members of our 2004 Olympic team that are here today. And I'm not exactly sure who's in the room, but if you're sitting with them, I know you can point to them and, 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 and know that they're here. Uh, we're, we're very proud to be bringing every member of the 2004 Olympic team back to be recognized this evening at the conclusion of the women's competition. And what a great thrill it will be to see them all walk on the floor and receive recognition, not just from USA Gymnastics, but from the entire gymnastics community. So thank you all for being here as well. Last but not least, you know, we've, we've got some really wonderful partners in a few of our corporate sponsors, and we've got quite a few of them here today with us at this luncheon. And I would just like to introduce a few of the individuals from these companies to you. You know, so much about what we do is how we promote ourselves and the image that we project. And we've got some fantastic companies that believe in what USA Gymnastics represents. And it's important that we all remember as we go forward that these types of relationships, these types of partnerships are what are going to take us to new heights. And so as I introduce these people, I just want you to know some of them are new to what they're doing. These companies have renewed with us for the next four years. Some of them are going to be very familiar to you, but they provide so much more than just a financial commitment to USA Gymnastics. They provide their resources and the power that they bring as marketing professionals to what we need in our, in our branding efforts in, in driving USA Gymnastics to new heights. Our title sponsor for the Visa Championships from Visa, Michael Lynch and Amy Fritchie. Thank you. From Chevron, Trisha Roche. From TJ Maxx, Lisa De Silver Ward and Diane Macera. From GK Elite, Sally Weaver and her team. Are they in the building here? I haven't seen them yet. Sally, thank you for everything that GK does. From AAI, Scott Roth and his team, Scott. 
from A1, Steve Capper and his family of professionals, and two other sponsors that have agreed to be our partners for the next four years. Adidas and 24-Hour Fitness, and I don't believe we have any representatives from either of those two companies here today, but some of you are familiar with Stacy Baker, and uh, we've got some new people that are, are involved with those companies. So when you see these folks, please extend your appreciation for what they do for USA Gymnastics. Well, we're here to talk about the inductees for the 2005 Hall of Fame, and um, I'm going to bring out a special person to USA Gymnastics, a gentleman who has helped us take the promotion of our sport to new heights as we look to provide more entertaining events, a person who has succeeded both on and off the athletic floor, and a guy who's about to become a father for the first time. Please welcome the 1996 Olympian, Mr. John McCready. All right. Thank you, Mr. Penny, the new president of USA Gymnastics. I wish I would have known. I want to come and give you an introduction. Well, good, af good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 2005 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This is a very special day, and I'm very honored to be here. It's a tremendous, tremendous honor for these athletes, and it's a big time in their life to uh, be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And uh, when, when you're a gymnast, you kind of look forward to, to this day. So. Um, you see their, their pictures up here, and a lot of these guys have uh, seen other people inducted. So when they walk in this room, it's a real special day, and it's a great way to uh, kind of bring a career to, uh, to, a, to a, not an end, but a, a nice finish. Being an inducted to the Hall of Fame is, is probably something that every athlete always thinks about. And today, many of these moments of these athletes' careers have been big moments of our lives. And we've seen these athletes in Olympic Games and World Championships make the United States look prouder than ever. So before we even get started, I'd like to give all the inductees a big round of applause for what they've done for USA Gymnastics. Without further ado, let's get to our first inductee. As a gymnast, there's no better feeling than having the best judges on the floor, knowing that your score is always going to be fairly delivered. Our first recipient is one of the most respected judges in the world and someone who has always represented the United States with great dignity and pride, Mr. Harry Berkey. Harry Berkey. Harry Berkey has contributed more than 30 years of service to the sport of gymnastics. Harry has been a highly respected men's brevet judge for 25 years and has judged three of the past Olympic Games 1996, 2000, and 2004. He has also judged eight world championships and three world cups, as well as earning the rank of FIG technical expert in the last two quadrenniums. Harry has served as the men's technical director or judge at every USA championships, Olympic and world championships trials since 1977. Harry is truly committed to the USA men's program. He has served as men's technical director or judge at numerous collegiate events and was an instructor at the USA Continental Judges course in 1989, 93, 97, and 2001. As president of the National Gymnastics Judges Association from 1987 to 1996 and continuously on the NGJA board of directors for over 25 years, Harry has given of his time and talent to the sport. He even coached for SUNY at Farmingdale from 1972 to 1982. Harry was a member of the USA Gymnastics Board of Directors from 1987 to 1996 and a member or chair of the Finance Committee from 1996 to present. His dedication to the sport earned him an induction into the NGJA Hall of Fame in 1991 and the Spirit of the Flame Award in 2001. Harry is married to Maureen, and they live in Bayshore, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Harry Berkey. Giving Harry his award is Mr. A.B. Grossfeld.
have a few things I'd like to say. Uh, normally I'm very uh, much at ease uh, talking to crowds, but when you receive an award like this, uh, what else can you really do but uh, say thanks? I was going to try not to use my glasses, but uh, unfortunately it won't work. <laughs> I guess I'm showing my age here. I was expecting Dan Marino and Steve Young to be here, but I don't see them around here. Oh, that was a football <laughs> hall of fame. Okay. I'd like to begin by congratulating the other members of the class of 2005. I'm especially honored to be inducted uh, with young men like Cheney Umphy and John Roethlisberger and sharing the stage with our master of ceremonies, uh, John McCready. I've been dedicating myself to our USA Men's Program uh, of outstanding young men uh, just like these. Nothing takes more work uh, and dedication than being an Olympic athlete like these Olympians on stage, and nearly as hard also as being an Olympic coach. I have tremendous respect for our athletes and our coaches. But being an Olympic judge um, has unique difficulties uh, as well. Uh, it's kind of a catch-22. Uh, we sit in a hot seat. We're expected to certainly make sure that uh, our, our own athletes get the scores they deserve, and yet, of course, be as fair as we can to everyone else uh, on the uh, competitive stage. So in being honored uh, as a judge, I accept this recognition also for all the other judges who work so hard uh, for USA Gymnastics, several of them who are in the back of the room here. Uh, last night at the uh, men's competition, uh, one of the questions John McCready asked me was, what do I like most about the sport of gymnastics? Uh, most certainly it's the athletes and the coaches who give their hearts and their souls to the sport. Uh, also the judges who have been my colleagues for years but also people in the office from the uh, president of USA Gymnastics, the chairman of the board, and to the administrators in the office who make the sport move, men like Ron Gallimore, our former men's program director, now vice president of USA, uh, our new uh, uh, program director, uh, Dennis McIntyre, and certainly Ron Brandt, who's our uh, men's program coordinator. If you omit any one of these groups, athletes, coaches, judges, administrators, working closely together, you will not have uh, or achieve success. Although from 79 to 84, we were very successful as a team, I believe that our greatest success has been in the last quadrennium from 2000 to 2004. Uh, in that time, we accomplished some of these things, two silver team medals in the 0103 World Championships, a silver team medal at the Olympics in Athens, and an unprecedented uh, all around gold medal in the 03 World Championships and 04 Olympics by Paul Harm. Uh, that had to be the crowning glory of gymnastics, certainly uh, since uh, I've been involved in it. For me, receiving the Spear of the Flame Award awarded by the athletes uh, three or four years ago uh, was a, a highlight of my career. And certainly being on the Olympic floor when our team earned the silver medal at last year's Olympics and Paul Harm winning the all around gold was also an incredible achievement. I wish our men's program continued success, and in closing, I'd like to thank all of my colleagues who have come here, especially uh, two very close friends, uh, Bruno Klaus and Abe Grossfeld. Abe was instrumental uh, in, uh, for me being re here to receive this award. Uh, I'd like to accept, uh, thank the uh, men's program committee for affording me the opportunities to be part of these past successes. And none of this could have been accomplished without uh, all of these groups working together as one cohesive unit. I have many moments in gymnastics that I'd like to talk about. However, uh, the last thing I would like to say is that uh, most important to me is my wife, Maureen, who has been a huge part of my gymnastics life, and she's sitting right over here. And <laughs> and and besides that, she's my honey. So <laughs> I'm very proud uh, of this award and this honor, and I thank you all very much. Thank you. Mr. Harry Berkey. It's so nice, you know, we, we see every on the floor what the athletes do for us, but 
I'm sure you can ask any of these athletes, especially the ones being inducted. It's people like Harry and people that dedicate their life and don't get to go out on the floor and actually get on the equipment, but uh, kind of get uh, that feeling in their heart and those goosebumps that we get when they see what we do. So it means a lot to us to have all you guys' support. Thanks again, Harry. All right, our next member being inducted. She was a member of the Magnificent Seven. She was known as a fearless competitor. Amy Chow has always been able to achieve whatever she pursues, accomplished in many things beyond the sport of gymnastics. Amy Chow continues to excel today. Amy Chow. Not only was Amy Chow a world-class gymnast, but she was also an accomplished pianist, a competitive diver during the summers, and an exceptional student. In fact, Amy was able to maintain a 4.0 grade point average during her high school elite training days. Amy was a member of the first ever gold medal Olympic gymnastics team in 1996. She also earned a silver medal on her favorite event, bars, where she dismounted with an incredible double twisting double back. Amy was a member of two world championships teams, 1994, which won Team Silver, and 1996, where she was a semi-finalist on vault. Amy qualified for the 1995 World Championships team, but a sprained ankle two days prior to her trip canceled her plans. Amy was a member of the 1995 gold medal Pan American Games team and also won vault, earned the silver medal on bars, and the bronze medal in the all-around. Amy continued training in elite gymnastics at West Valley Gymnastics School with her coaches Mark Young and Diane Amos while pursuing her degree at Stanford University. She was able to earn a spot on her second Olympic team in 2000 where she and her teammates finished fourth. Chow graduated in 2002 from Stanford with a BS in biology. Currently studying at Stanford University, Amy is now in her third year of medical school. Amy's leaning toward a career in pediatrics, which has been her goal since she was 12 years old, and she'd like to stay on the West Coast to practice medicine. Although Amy doesn't do gymnastics seriously anymore, she has taken up pole vaulting in the last couple of years just for fun. An accomplished pianist, Amy played in the National Piano Auditions for 14 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Amy Chow. Well, as you all know, I don't usually say too much, but um, <laughs> I'll say this. I'm in medical school right now, and sometimes it gets kind of crazy um, staying up all night and being on call and um, just taking care of all the patients, and I don't really stop to think about you know, what I've done and what has happened over the years. So I guess this is a good opportunity for me to do that. But um, I just wanted to thank um, my coaches for always being there for me. Um, my parents for driving me everywhere, and <laughs> um, everybody else for all of their support, so thanks. Moving on to our next inductee. Among one of Kelly Hill's most accomplished athletes is a three-time Olympic team member. Exploding onto the scene in 1992, this woman quickly became a favorite fan and continues to be among one of the most popular gymnasts to ever wear red, white, and blue. Her explosive style earned her the nickname Awesome Dawson. Dominique Dawes is our next recipient. Dominique Dawes. From Olympic gold medalist to the current president of the Women's Sports Foundation, Dominique Dawes continues on a path to inspire, motivate, and lead. Dominique's start in gymnastics began at age six. Her first and only coach, Kelly Hill, quickly realized her potential. 
Dominic burst into the international spotlight at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona, becoming the first African-American female to qualify to an Olympic Games in the sport of gymnastics. At the 1996 Olympic Games, Dominique and the USA Gymnastics team stole the hearts of Americans with their first ever team gold medal. At those same games, Awesome Dawson became the first African American to win an individual gymnastics medal with her bronze on floor. Dawes wrapped up her competitive gymnastics career following her third Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. Dominique is a graduate of the University of Maryland College Park. While she was a full-time student, she remained focused and committed to her multiple career opportunities, which included motivational speaking, broadcasting, and private coaching. Due to her drive and dedication, Dominique is becoming a renowned public speaker and spokesperson for many different campaigns and companies. These experiences have ranged from educating the public on health-related issues, consulting with a sports apparel line of clothing, engaging communities on public issues of equality and political concerns, and supporting Olympic bids, such as Chesapeake Region 2012 Coalition. Additionally, Dominique continues to gain experience in the world of broadcasting by commentating numerous collegiate and international competitions. Ladies and gentlemen, Dominique Dawes. Thank you so much. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I'll try my best not to cry. I did not only just cry in practice and at meets, I actually cry in the real world too. Um, but first I've got to say uh, thank you to God because I have a very strong faith and belief in a higher power and I truly believe that uh, not only would I not be here today if it wasn't for uh, him, but also I don't think I would have been able to persevere through the bumps in the road just that life has put me not only in just gymnastics but just life in general. Uh, so my faith is very important. But I'd also like to say, I'm trying my best not to cry. But I also say thank you to, <clears throat> to someone that's meant so much to me. And her name is Kelly Hill. And truly, Rick is here to represent the Hill family. And I cannot thank you all more than enough for taking in a young child and seeing more in me than I could ever see in myself. You guys have been amazing to me. And I really, truly would not be the confident, strong person that I'm here today. And that started when I met you guys when I was six years old. And still, when I'm 28, you treat me the same. And I cannot thank you all enough to Rick, to Kelly, to thank you. <laughs> to, for Rick, to Rick, Kelly, Ryan, and Jason. Because you guys have truly been a second family to me. Then I've got to say thank you to all my friends and fans. I have had wonderful teammates throughout the years that have not loved me because of my Olympic team accomplishments or medals. They love me because of the person that I was, and I cannot thank them enough. They're not here today because they're all partying in D.C. on my behalf, they told me. They called me earlier to let me know that. And that would be people like Wendy Wheaton, Shelly Hernandez, people that have pushed me that you guys will never know them. But as I'm, I've accomplished greatness in my sport with the Olympics and the Hall of Fame, they've accomplished great things in their sport as well. They got full scholarships, and they left, more importantly, as stronger people. Then I got to also turn to my Olympic teammates, because you guys are pretty amazing. <clears throat> I first got to say thank you, Amanda. I don't know if you remember this, but in 1996, go figure, I had a breakdown before we walked out at the Olympics in 1996. And, you know, and, and I just broke down and was terrified and didn't know if I could do it. And Amanda came up to me and just, we prayed together. And that really made all the difference in the world. Shannon, you have been an amazing athlete. I look up to you, no matter that you're younger than me, goodness, um, but I look up to you greatly because your accomplishments in the gymnastics world and outside of the gymnastics world are impeccable. And you've always been a great competitor, that, competitor that's made me want to become a better person as well. Amy, great teammate. Dominic Mociano, great teammate. Good luck in your comeback. It's going to be fun. But it's going to you know, definitely be tough. But it's going to be worth it. So stick it out. And we all from the 96 Olympics will be cheering you on and wishing the best for you. Because I love to see my teammates excel in whatever they decide to do in life. 
I want to say thank you to everyone here. <clears throat> my fans and supporters have been phenomenal for me. In my third Olympic comeback, I was really wondering why was I coming back. I could not understand why I wanted to put a leotard on again. I could not understand why I would want to wake up at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning and go train. I really thought I was crazy. And my boyfriend at the time is here today to support me, and I'm sure he thought I was crazy at that time as well. And I remember going to Olympic trials, stepping in at the Fleet Center, and feeling the crowd cheer and echo Awesome Dawson or Dominic Dawes or You Can Do It, and that's the reason why I came back, because the fans are phenomenal in the sport of gymnastics. So for my faith, my family, my friends and fans, you guys have always been spectacular, and truly this award is because you guys have been strong supporters of me. Thank you so much. Giving Dominique her award is Carolyn Bowers. Let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Great memories from watching them in 96. God, I was there and nothing like it. And uh, Dominique has kind of uh, alluded in her speech or her next inductee is, and, and obviously she's a very special person. So often the athlete receives the majority of the attention when medals are won. Everyone here knows that behind every good athlete is a, ca is a capable and committed coach. Here in the United States, we have some of the best coaches in the world. Being inducted today as a woman who has coached the last three Olympic teams, Ms. Kelly Hill. Kelly Hill. Kelly Hill has been a dominant force in the USA women's success over the last four quadrenniums. Kelly has coached a national team member every year since 1989 and was the coach of the national champion in 1994. 2000, 2003, and 2004. She was the personal coach of an Olympian for each of the last four Olympic Games and coached the last three Olympic trials champions in 1996, 2000, and 2004. Kelly has placed three different gymnasts on Olympic teams, Dominique Dawes, Elise Ray, and Courtney Kupitz. Kelly was the head coach for the USA Women's Olympic Team in 2000 and 2004 and was the head coach for the USA Women at the 1994, 96, 99, and 2003 World Championships. She was the personal coach for three-time Olympian Dominique Dawes at the 1992, 96, and 2000 Olympics, and also the World Championships of 1992, 93, 94, and 96. Elise Ray at the 2000 Olympics and 1999 World Championships and Courtney Kupitz at the 2004 Olympics and the World Championships of 2002 and 2003. Kelly was named the USA Gymnastics Women's Artistic Coach of the Year in 2000 and 2003 and was the United States Elite Coaches Association Coach of the Year in 1991, 93, 96, 99, 2000, and 2003. Kelly is the owner of Hills Gymnastics in Gaithersburg, Maryland. In addition to her role as coach in elite women's gymnastics, she has served on the following. International Elite Committee from 1992 to present. The USA Gymnastics Board of Directors. The Junior Olympic Program Committee. The Region 7 Board. And the Maryland State Board. Kelly has given of her time and talents to our sport and has been a major factor in the building of the USA women's success in the world of international gymnastics. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Hill. Kelly, here, Ke Kelly Hill cannot be here today. She's doing what she does best. She's coaching the junior session with her athletes. She has prepared, though, a video response, so let's take a look at that. I would like to thank you for this incredible honor. To be inducted into the Hall of Fame is something I had never quite imagined. I am proud as all to be inducted with my longtime athlete, Dominique Dawes. This comes as, uh, with many, many thank yous to the Federation who has stood behind me, Kathy Kelly, Marta Caroli, all the absolutely wonderful coaches I work with, my region, Region 7, 
Region 7 is the best. These people have taken me under their wing and helped me out 25 years ago or more. It's hard to believe. The athletes who have given me the opportunity to work with them. I am proud of every single athlete I have ever coached and honored to have had that opportunity to work with them. My family has stood behind me. I think sometimes they wonder where I'm at or what I'm doing. It's always been gymnastics. My life is gymnastics. And I would just like to thank everyone for giving me this honor. Accepting the award on behalf of Kelly is her husband, Rich Hill. Thank you. I'm very proud to accept this for Kelly, and I know she's very proud uh, of the honor. Thank you. Okay. Our next inductee. She was a member of the 1992 Olympic team for rhythmic gymnastics. After her career, she went on to graduate magna cum laude from Wake Forest. Let's learn more about Jennifer Lovell Moreno. Jennifer Laval Moreno. Jennifer Laval Moreno is from Miami, Florida, and was a rhythmic national team member for seven years during her career. A highlight for Jennifer was to win the 1992 Olympic trials and earn a spot on the 1992 Olympic Games team for rhythmic gymnastics. She placed 23rd all-around at the Games in Barcelona. Jennifer trained in Miami with her coaches Mary Ellen and Maureen Holdreth during the beginning years of her career, and then moved to Chicago, Illinois when she was 16 to train with Irina Vidovitz at Illinois Rhythmics. She began the sport of gymnastics in 1983 and competed internationally on numerous occasions, visiting countries including Spain, Germany, Ukraine, Greece, Cuba, Portugal, and Japan. Jennifer was a member of the 1991 World Championships team and the Pan American Games team, where she won the bronze medal for her ball routine. She also finished 14th all around at the 1990 Goodwill Games. Another highlight was becoming the 1991 Rhythmic National Champion and Olympic Festival Champion the same year. Jennifer graduated magna cum laude from Lake Forest College with a Bachelor of Arts degree where she majored in business and psychology. She was a member of the Entrepreneurs Club and Economics Honor Society. Jennifer met Juan Miguel Moreno, a Taekwondo athlete, at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs in 1991 while attending a rhythmic competition. They both competed in the 1992 Olympic Games and were married in 1994. They have two daughters, Olivia, who is four, and Natalia, who will turn two in November of this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer Laval Moreno. that I was being inducted to the Hall of Fame, it came as a very pleasant surprise. These days, the closest thing I do to rhythmic is balance my little one on my hip while stirring mac and cheese and shutting the refrigerator door with my leg. So for about a week, I was in a daze just with all these memories flooding back of my whole career and everything. And I realized how much I really miss rhythmic and how many people I need to thank for contributing to my success. God, I thought this would come to the end. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, um, even though the vast majority of the people are at the rhythmic competition right now, I, for the record, I need to thank some people. 
First, my coaches, Mary Ellen and Maureen Holdreth, for introducing me to the sport and helping me find and develop my style. For Irina Vadovitz for being a great coach and improving me and fulfilling many more roles than that of a coach while I was away from home. Uh, I want to thank the gymnasts that came before me that I looked up to and that inspired me to work hard, such as Dakin Lister, Lydia Bree, Stacy Overseer, Marina Kanyavsky, Wendy Hilliard, Michelle Brube, and of course Diane Simpson. I want to thank my teammates and friends in the sport that were always there for me, especially Caroline Hunt, Krista All, and my sister Heather, who is eight months pregnant and couldn't be here today. I want to thank Sarah and George Engdahl and Marcy and Arnold Klein for taking me into their home and making me a part of their family when I lived away from home. I want to thank all the judges and Nora Hitzel for all their hard work and support and encouragement throughout the years. I need to thank my husband whose love and support and the promise of our future together really helped me through the last two years in the sport. And finally, most importantly, I need to thank my parents who encouraged me and supported me and let me follow my dream, even when that meant we would be apart. Thanks, Mom. I am very proud of what I was able to accomplish in Rhythmic. It has really meant a lot to me, and this induction makes me feel like it meant something to the sport in this country, and that really feels good. Thank you very much. Okay, our next inductee. In his first junior national championships, he took 76th place. <laughs> At that time, no one believed or knew he would go on to win four national championships, two American Cup champions, six world championship team members, three Olympic teams. From 1995 to 2000, he was the backbone of Team USA. I can honestly say, I would not have been the gymnast I was, or definitely not the person I am today, if he had not been a part of my life. He taught me, along with Team USA, responsibility, hard work, and most importantly, how to give 100% of your heart and your soul to something and not being scared. John Roethlisberger. John Roethlisberger. For John Roethlisberger, being an Olympian was a family affair. John's father, Fred, was a member of the 1968 Olympic gymnastics team, while his sister, Marie, was a member of the 1984 Olympic gymnastics team. Not to be outdone, John is a three-time Olympian competing in the 1992, 96, and 2000 Olympic Games. John finished seventh all around in Atlanta. At that time, this was the best U.S. finish in a non-boycotted Olympics since 1932. This dynamic athlete won four national all-around titles in 1990, 92, 93, and 95, the first gymnast to do so in 29 years. John was named Sports Person of the Year in 1990, 92, 93, 95, 98, and 2000, and was a member of six World Championships teams. John had a very successful collegiate career at the University of Minnesota, becoming a three-time NCAA All-Around Champion and a four-time Big Ten All-Around Champion under the direction of his coach and father, Fred Roethlisberger. He also won the 1993 Nissan Award and was a 1992 and 93 Academic All-American. In 1993, John was named the winner of the NCAA Top Six Award, which is awarded annually to the top six student athletes in the nation from all sports. A graduate of the University of Minnesota, John has a degree in international business and finance with a minor in speech communications. Currently, he and his former teammate, John McCready, own and operate FlipFest, a summer gymnastics camp in Knoxville, Tennessee. John has also obtained his real estate license and pursued in this field in Minnesota. He has also done commentating for NCAA Sports on Fox Sports Net, college sports television, worked with NBC Sports in production at the 2004 Games, 
and worked with USA Gymnastics since 2001, doing event promotions and marketing. John, who is also a Brevet judge, is now serving on the executive committee of the USA Gymnastics Board of Directors as an athlete director and sits on the Athletes Commission for the FIG. Ladies and gentlemen, John Roethlisberger. First of all, Kathy, um, that five-minute thing, pretty much throw that out the door. I figure I got Kelly and Amy's extra time, so we can add that to mine. You know, and I walked in here today, I, th I saw a few people, and it just kind of put any, everything in perspective. Saw Kenny Akron, a judge who was on the first international trip I ever went on. Saw Bruno Klaus. I was at his first camp that he ever had at the IGC, where it's located now. And I saw Francis Allen, who's been recruiting me since I was about four years old, and I thought, my God. By the way, I'm going to let the NCAA know about that. <laughs> but seriously, I've been thinking a lot about what I wanted to say today, and it's really hard because what do you say to a sport that has been more than just a part of your life? It really has been my life. And what do you say to a group of people that are more than just friends and acquaintances? They're like my family. And I want to say one other thing. I'm going to be crying like a baby before this thing is over, too. <laughs> First and foremost, I got a couple tables over here of friends that made... Thanks. I get the whole box. <laughs> Thanks, John. Appreciate it. I have a couple tables of friends that made the trip over here, and I really want to just acknowledge them. Uh, Brian, Phil, Ginger, Randy, Allie, Mark, Jeff, and Jess, Brett. You guys are awesome friends, and it means a lot to me that you're here today. Uh, one person that um, I just have to quickly acknowledge that's not here, um, who was a big part of my career and helped me get to where I got to, is uh, Kelly McConnell. Uh, you have been a great partner. You were there for six world championships and three Olympic games, and you supported me in every crazy, stupid dream or idea I ever had, and I couldn't have asked for a better support system or a better partner. Thank you. And I also have a family member here today, my mom. You know, for somebody who is never a gymnast and never a coach, I learned more from you Where was I? <laughs> I want to thank you for everything you've taught me throughout my life. Um, you gave me life, and I swear you've saved my life many times. Thank you for being there for me. All right, I got done with page one. <laughs> Doing good. You know, I've had a ton of coaches throughout my career, and you're in this sport for 30 years. I swear, every time I run into a coach, they say, I remember coaching you when you were four. I remember coaching you when you were 14, when you were 12. Everybody who's coached gymnastics has coached me at some point in time. <laughs> so I'm not going to mention all of them, but uh, there are a few that I really do need to mention. Tim LaFleur was my first coach I ever had in club. He was a, one of my role models as a young gymnast. And like every gymnast at the University of Minnesota, at some point in time, he was also my babysitter. Uh, Bill Strand, who was my great club coach. Tom Galimi, who coached me late in my career, who uh, coached me through some tough times. And thankfully, he was one of those guys that brought a lot of humor to the gym. He never saw a buffet he didn't like and never finished a crossword puzzle he couldn't do without cheating. But he brought me a lot of laughs, and I, I thank him for that. And there's another coach, too, that wasn't my personal coach, but nonetheless, he taught me a lot as a person and as a gymnast. And this person is Peter Corman. And just about everybody in here has probably at least heard of Peter Corman. A lot of you know him very well. But there's one thing that nobody in here knows is where Peter Corman is because I think he disappeared from the face of the earth, which really is too bad because Peter brought a lot to my career. Peter coached me at three world championships and two Olympic games, and Peter taught me what it meant to represent the greatest country in the world. He instilled in me and the teams that I was on a pride in our country that we took with us every time we stepped onto the floor, and we were never the best team on the floor. But I challenge you to find a team that fought harder, that never gave up and had, that had more pride than ours. Tat Peter tattooed, literally, figuratively, tattooed the American flag onto all of our hearts. And as I look back at my career, I never won a world or Olympic medal. But as I look at those experiences that I had, 
I realized that those are my Olympic medals. And to Peter Corman, wherever you are, I want to thank you for that. And I had a couple college coaches that obviously made a big impact on my life, and they were actually beyond college as well. One of them was Russ Fistrom, and a lot of you know Russ as well. Russ is a pretty soft-spoken guy. He's one of those guys that doesn't really make himself heard, doesn't need to be heard, but he's the one that I think more people need to listen to. I really feel like he's one of the most underrated coaches and, and really judging minds that we have in the United States. And, Judge, and Russ, rather, was in the gym since I was two years old. He was on the gymnastics team at Minnesota. He was a long-haired hippie. His specialty was making those brownies for the rest of the team. I don't know what they were, but they really liked them. <laughs> and uh, don't tell him I said that. I'd be really mad. <laughs> but Russ, Russ really was the stability to my dad's volatility. And if you know my dad, you know what I'm talking about. Russ will always be like a second father to me. He was a great part of my life something I'm very thankful for. Thank you, Russ. Then there was one coach that had the biggest impact on me of all of them. Most of you know him, too. He is my father, Fred. This page is going to be tough. He is the only guy that I know that can be more of a stubborn SOB than I can. In fact, he taught me that in order to be good, sometimes you have to be a stubborn SOB. I, don't, I just don't think he thought I would master the skill as well as I did. You know, he really was, he really was a no-nonsense coach. He said, you got to come and pack your lunch every day. You got to make hay while the sun shines. And if you'll pardon my expression, my expression, his favorite one was, shit or get off the pot. Every day was very businesslike. And although I always, always, well, almost always had fun in the gym, he, he said, you don't come to the gym and decide how you, see how you feel and then decide what you're going to do. You come to the gym, you put one foot in front of the other, and you don't stop until that plan is done. And believe it or not, I found my dad very motivating. And I don't know if the other gymnasts he coached would think the same thing, but and I, would, I would never recommend that he goes out on the motivational speaking tour by any means. <laughs> but I found him very motivating. And, and I can remember a speech he gave to the team one time. Got up there, and he was talking to some of the guys that would congratulate other guys, say good job to other guys when they would mess up in a competition. And finally, he had enough. He's like, you know what, guys? If somebody messes up, don't tell them good job. They screwed up. It wasn't a good job. And if they go out there and they do what they're supposed to do, don't get all crazy and excited. They were supposed to do that. And you know, it sounds kind of harsh, but it is amazing how hard you will work to see, hear your coach tell you good job. And it's amazing what a feeling it is when you have a coach like that, that you know when he says good job, it probably really was a good job. Some people have commented to me that, uh, you know, they're kind of surprised and a little disappointed that my dad's not here. But if you truly knew my dad, it would not surprise you one bit. First of all, social settings, he's not real good in those. No, I'm just kidding. But he was always about the process. He was never about the reward. He was never about the prize at the end. Sure, the prize was great, and that's, the, that's what the plan was for. And that's what the motivation was, but that's not his thing. He was about the process, and Fred and I truly relished the process. And to Dad, he's probably out killing some wild game right now. I want to thank you for my compulsiveness and for teaching me that if you really want something, first thing you should do is start by working harder than everybody else. It was because of you, probably more than any other individual, that I'm standing here today. And I want you to know that regardless of whatever I accomplish the rest of my life, because of what you taught me as a coach and as a father, you'll be a part of that. I think, um, I'm not done, Kathy. Don't get up. Just relax. We've got time. You guys got somewhere you need to be? I think every kid growing up has somebody they looked up to. You know, a lot of my friends would turn on the TV, they would open up a magazine to find their idol, to find their role model. For me, I opened my bedroom door and I looked across the hall because my idol, my role model, was my sister, Marie. And even though she never won an Olympic gold medal, in my opinion, she epitomized what a champion was all about. She, she defined hard work, determination, perseverance, and she overcame more in her life and her career than most people will ever face. When she made that 84 Olympic team, she did it 
a couple weeks after having elbow surgery, she could barely train, she couldn't warm up. And when she went out there and made that team, she showed me what it truly meant to never give up. Many people comment to me, you know, it must have been hard to have a, a successful sister, a successful sister as a gymnast, you know, it must have been put a lot of pressure on you to be good as well. And I thought, not at all. It was a huge advantage to me. She showed me the way. She taught me more than anybody else in the world about how to be successful without ever saying a word. And to Marie, my big sister, I want to thank you for paving the way for your little brother. One thing that I took out of the sport of gymnastics that I will be forever thankful for are the friends that I made. And before I came here tonight, this afternoon, I made a list of all the guys that I've ever traveled with, that competed with, and don't worry, I'm not going to go through all of them, Kathy, just relax. But as I looked at that list, I thought, my God, I, this, is so, this is so humbling. I looked at this list of guys, and I thought, I am so blessed and so humbled to have traveled the world and made, had made these amazing lifelong friends. And I looked at the list, and guys like Chris Waller, Scott Keswick, Dominic Minicucci, Lance Ringnald, Mihai Baju, Blaine Wilson, who, thanks a lot, Blaine, if it wasn't for you, I'd have seven national championships instead of four. <laughs> Jair Lynch, Jay Thornton, Chris Young, Steve McCain, the Homs, Sean Towns and Cheney, Josh Stein, the guys all at Minnesota, um, you guys know a lot of them. Kip Simons, who if this was a rated R speech right now and you had a couple hours, I could entertain you forever with Kip Simons stories. Awesome friend. And of course, John McCready, who is not a friend, not a teammate, he's my brother. You know, the first time I met that guy, 1992, Olympics. The guy showed up everywhere, had this hairdo, Parker Lewis we called him, stuck way up like that. And I thought, who is this annoying guy? And here I'm 13 years later, I'm hanging out, I look over and I go, who is that annoying guy? <laughs> but no one else in the world have I ever met that will laugh at my stupid jokes and I will laugh at his. And he gave me a great honor that I might have to step up at any moment because I am going to be the videographer for the delivery of his first child. Thanks, man. I have one last thank you, and it's not directed to a person. It's directed to many people. It's directed to something intangible, something we all talk about but we can't touch, we can't quantify. It's something that we're all a part of and that's all a part of us, but that's much bigger than all of us, and it's the sport of gymnastics. Gymnastics. Our, my relationship with gymnastics literally started when I was born. I had two grandparents and a father who are gymnasts, and I was born into the sport. And as a kid, it showed me what just plain old fun was all about. But as I got older, it became more than just a backflip, more than a pair of grips, more than a pommel horse, and more than an Olympic team. Gymnastics became a part of me. You made me laugh. You made me cry. You brought me joy and excitement that I cannot find in my everyday life. You brought me pain and frustration that I hope I don't ever find in my everyday life. But I wouldn't change a thing. You were my greatest teacher. You made me who I am today, which I hope is a good thing. Being a gymnast and training for the Olympic Games and ulti ultimately being an Olympian is one of the greatest feelings I have ever found in my life. And I think if you ask any Olympian, they'll probably tell you the same thing. I think there are a few things in life where you can train and train for that one moment, and with all the pressure of a lifetime of work, step out on the floor and put everything on the line. And what else in life can you do that when you finish, your first reaction is that you want to pump your fist and go, yeah! And when you pump your fist and you turn around, you see six of your best friends in the world doing the same thing. But the best part is as you're on that floor with your best friends cheering, with that red, white, and blue on, that American flag tattooed on your heart, you can almost hear an entire country, no, the greatest country in the world, doing it right along with you. So to the sport of gymnastics, to that untouchable, intangible entity that is part of all of us, yet is much bigger than all of us, I want to give you my most heartfelt thank you. I hope that during my lifetime, I can give even half what you've given me. Thank you for the, su the successes, the failures, the thrills, the lessons, most of all the friends. I want to thank you for allowing a very common man the opportunity 
to live a very uncommon life. Thank you. All right, moving on. This next gentleman was right along our side, John on my side, in 1996 at the Olympic Games. He's a true testament to perseverance. He's proved that in his comeback when he had a near career ending injury. And he's continuing to show that same skill and dedication to the medical field. Let's learn more about Cheney Humphrey. Cheney Humphrey. Cheney Humphrey was decorated with the most impressive performance on high bar at the 1994 Goodwill Games and that same year was featured in Sports Illustrated's Faces in the Crowd. He later went on to become a member of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. Cheney's career dates back to the age of 13, when he made his first national team, and then two years later became national champion. From there he went on to represent the U.S. abroad in international competitions. In 1992, Cheney suffered a near-career-ending injury. However, with the support of his family and friends, he returned to competition and was awarded the 1993 Hilton Bounce Back Award for recovery from an ankle injury. Cheney was a four-time World Championships team member from 1989 to 96 and an individual event World Championship finalist from 94 through 96. He took fourth place on high bar at the 1994 World Championships. He attended UCLA as an undergraduate majoring in physiological science and was also a member and later captain of the UCLA men's gymnastics team. He graduated in 1994 and went on to medical school, graduating from UCLA Medical School in 2003. He subsequently finished two years of orthopedic surgery training at the University of Colorado and will complete his residency in physical science and rehabilitation at Stanford University, with plans to pursue a career in sports medicine. Born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, he and his wife, Christina, currently reside in Santa Clara, California. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheney Humphrey. Uh, John, I think you probably left me with about a minute, and maybe I can squeeze it into two minutes here. We'll try. But uh, I just want to say it's definitely a, a very cherished moment for me to be uh, joining such a distinguished uh, group. You know, gymnastics for me has always been a way of life. You know, it's been a way of thinking and acting. Um, you know, gymnastics taught me so much about myself. It taught me about success, about how to deal with uh, defeat. It taught me about obstacles and overcoming them. You know, and through interactions with some of the inner city programs and uh, some of the multiple trips to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, <laughs> it taught me how to, to share gymnastics with my family and friends, uh, to share with the rest of the community and, and USA Gymnastics with the world. Uh, you know, this, I, I think this is harder than uh, doing last year's trauma surgery, being up here in front of you. But I, I, I think gymnastics has definitely given me uh, the strength to pursue a, a medical career. It's been one of the driving forces in everything that I've done in life, and so I owe much to the sport. That being said, I, I owe a lot to many of those people that were there for the journey. Uh, my beautiful wife, Christina, is here today to support me, and my brother, young brother, Edward, who's still competing, is here, and grandmother and uh, Uncle Mike, uh, also along. But uh, mom and dad have, have given me such support and, and uh, given me the strength to, to proceed on and to push through. Um, let's see if I'm forgetting anybody. Uh, 
I want to also make a special thanks to Art Sherlock, whose uh, strength and courage, courage uh, has given me the strength to, to do the things that I've done in my life. There's so many other people I'd like to thank, and I think you all know who you are. Um, but uh, my hope is that USA Gymnastics continues to be a beacon for the rest of our young youth coming up, a beacon of strength and, and uh, character. So thank you for this honor. And thank you. Shane, you don't go too far. We have all the uh, inductees, please come up here. All the inductees, please come up. Everyone, you're getting reinducted again. It's a cool thing. We're just doing it. First time we've done it. Come on up on the stage. The reason why we do this is because we want to get a picture of all you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to be your host for these ceremonies. I certainly look forward to seeing you guys tonight at the competition. The Visa Championships will take place tonight. The women, and we're going to have the 2004 Olympic team, the entire Olympic team will be with us there at the competition. So that's a great event to have them come in there, and Visa's helped us out with that. So make sure you're there to see this. Right, right here behind us tonight is an example of what this sport is all about, all individual stories that represent a family that we are so, so proud to be a part of. And, uh, when Harry was up here, he mentioned, you know, the, the Football Hall of Fame. He said, oh, this is the Gymnastics Hall of Fame. We might not be the biggest sport, and there's only one reason because of that. It's because it's the hardest sport in the world, and not too many people can do it. So thank, thank all of you for coming tonight, and let's give these guys a big standing ovation for everything they've done for the sport of gymnastics. Thank you, everybody. See you tonight. Thank you, John McCready. Thank you all for coming, and congratulations to this marvelous class. 2005, we'll see you at the Visa Championships tonight, and please be there with us in 2006 for the Hall of Fame in St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs>